Dean Kelly, ladies and gentlemen. Dean Kelly. Dean, God damn it. We Dean just talked Kelly. about... <laughs> <laughs> we had some technical difficulties and that totally threw my mind in a different direction. Dion Kelly. Yes. DK, for sure. You know, when uh, I go to like banks and I go to places where I know I'm never going to see the person again, I just don't say anything when I say Dean. I'm <laughs> <You> like... Because just... <laughs> I just like... Do I look like a Dean? Maybe. Maybe I look like a Dean. I don't... I picture Dean. I just don't picture myself. So... <laughs> But yes, no, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, man. Uh, we met, I think it was last September. Uh, yeah. uh, it was it was in, for the uh, writing history video shoot. Yes. And uh, that was a really good time. That was probably definitely uh, the shitty year that 2020 was. That was definitely one of the highlights. Uh, <laughs> for, for me as well. It was, it was uh, wonderful to get that many MCs in one space. Yeah, yeah. See all the the creative people bouncing back. You know, you guys had a lot of really interesting conversations, and I was kind of, I, 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 I really kind of felt out of place there. I won't lie. Um, mm. But you guys were all really uh, welcoming and uh, great people to be around. So I yeah. appreciate that experience. No, I, I didn't feel you were you were out of place. I actually <laughs> had um, that picture that we had took. Um, I had that for my background on my iPad for like oh fuck for probably about four months straight, and and you were in that you know I didn't because yeah. there was we had one that was just the MCs that were there, and then we had one that had everybody who was in the building um, at the time. So um, yeah, you were definitely part of that. Awesome, hey, I appreciate that, man. Uh, like I said, it was truly it was truly special to be there. Um, so I guess starting off, uh, what's some of your background? Like, uh, you hear, you grew up around here. What I'm trying to adjust this mic, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, where are you from? What's your, what's your background? Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, born and raised in Des Moines. Um, okay. mainly in Des Moines until uh, about high school. Then I moved to Valley Junction, West Des Moines. Um, mm-hmm. so went to Valley. Oh. Um, <laughs> but then that wasn't, you know, I mean, obviously it was going from South Side schools to Valley Southwoods was, um, quite the trip. So um, I wasn't there for long. I ended up going to Walnut Creek campus, which is an alternative high school. Um, graduated from there. But um, yeah, born and raised here here in Des Moines. That's tight, man. Um, that ha- like, how do you feel about like this area? Do you enjoy it? Um, like, do you ever think about going other places? Like, because there's kind of this, <clears throat> I think it's kind of changing this year, but like, there's always kind of been the stigma of like, you know, are you going to really stay in the middle of nowhere in Iowa? Are you going to try to go anywhere else? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I actually, once, when I graduated, I traveled um, all over the East Coast and all over the West Coast. Okay. So um, I, I had my fair share of like going to different, I mean, it was, it was a few years before I, I started a family and was been stationary. Uh, I've been stationary now for, the last three years, actually. But um, so before that, I was uh, going to different places. And um, I mean, they're, they're all wonderful to go. Um, I think for me, uh, I enjoy having those different places to go as a place to go instead of a place to live mm. um, here. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. It could be the uh, when I was when I was 18, I used to say I wanted to be the Bruce Wayne of, of Gotham. Um, <laughs> so it could be it could be a little bit of that, like still hidden in there. Um, or tight. or it could be um, also I just see that you know the the uh, not only it's it's my home so I want to be able to give back but also it's just uh, I don't know I I, uh, I just feel like when it, there's it, there's a certain balance here that you don't get in other places um, and and that balance for me um, as in like seasons and things of that nature like the, we get all four seasons I'm a nature guy I love to be able to have some snow and also some some uh, some uh, summertime, but um, and then the last thing is that uh, I also um, 
sorry, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Oh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> I, I also, though, um, I had it, and I really wanted to say it. Not, not, <laughs> Sorry, not, man. Not We're on the spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no worries. Um, but no, I, I just enjoy um, the, the the different seasons, and then the fact that uh, a lot of the things that I do aren't here. So I have an opportunity to build something that isn't in Iowa that I feel like I want to mm-hmm. be able to provide to the Midwest. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, and that's just culture, really, for me. Um, that's why I love being able to see that we got different murals getting painted around the city. Mm. I feel like arts are starting to finally come come in. Um, but that's what I want to be able to bring here. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Well, uh, I you know, the thing I really appreciate about you is you have, um, like, you definitely see that with you. Like, you have a drive, like, for the community. I feel like there are a lot of people, you know, maybe they're doing music or whatever else, and they kind of do have that. But I've kind of discovered that, like, myself in the last year. Like, it is really important to... Uh, focus on your community like um seth leopold have you do you know him happy yeah, snag yeah um yeah yep, yep. he has he has a i feel like he has a lot of um um structure around that he's always you know he the first time i ever met him on the podcast he talked about you know how we shouldn't be worrying about our president we should be worrying about our governor and our mayor and like the people you know in, in terms of that kind of stuff like that's mm-hmm. what we should really be worried about and focused on like when the mayor elections coming up this november that's what people around here should be mm-hmm. you know really thinking about mm-hmm. yeah um a good quote that uh a good friend of mine told me was um uh, that really stuck was uh think global but act local Mm. um and that really resonated because i wanted to save the you know i mean i feel like at some point every adolescent wants to come out and save the world you know and be that hero um but um to me i I, at least i wanted to and um yeah you just can't say you know save everybody so it's it's i i find it um really important to have like like six solid people you really Mm. are there for and if you can do that and then, then other people can do that like think about like just um how 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 um fulfilled one individual would be mm-hmm. because you focus at, at least i mean i'm not saying you can't you know mingle and things of that nature i'm just saying like you have those six primary you got people, solid people you know um and then i also read something about uh about the fact that the reason why human beings are so lonely um nowadays is because of the whole idea of like if a bee were to le- like lose its hive and like lose it you know the um who it's flying with it would actually um die out if it, if it mm. you know was by itself and couldn't make it back um so it just talks about like that that criminal um tribal you know space and like mm, um yeah so that's i mean i, I yeah may you know like community is where I, you know it starts and if we can be a solid community then we can actually be um stable enough to help other communities yeah and that's where the you know to me that that balance comes in i i, I appreciate that sentiment um I think technology has a lot to do with, you know, the analogy of like, you know, venturing outwards, like it puts you kind of in this, and I'm guilty of it as well. It puts you in this like uh, lane, this train that like, you just think, you know, possibilities are endless and you can truly create a reality where like, you are the best person in yes. the entire planet of yes. all the billions of people, you know? So yeah, it's it, no, just, just it's recently I, um, I put that, I had a song called hard drive and I said, um, uh, uh, survival survival instincts turn me into a consumer now there's no need for the future um all i have is broken computers and fixed algorithms uh the the world's at the the world's at the tip of my finger there's no need to explore or so you know something something in that nature uh i just wrote it recently so i'm trying to <laughs> look look back in my notes but uh but the the, the thing is um, you know the, the the fact that like the having the world in our fingertips like it makes people not want to go out and actually see what's out there. It's like, oh, I can look at this right here. Why? Why would I, yeah. you know, go out and actually um, venture out? Um, so yeah, I've, I, I that resonates with me. I can I can Google it and it looks better on my phone than. <laughs> yeah, I mean outside. it's it's fucking it's exhausting to do the real shit, you know. Especially, yeah. I think I think another reason why we get so caught up in the trap is because, um, you know, the generation we can come, you know, we come from. Like to me. I feel like the fact that so many things weren't spoke about is just that I feel like a lot of Americans and just a lot of people, at least around me, got really, really comfortable with mm-hmm. just uh, thinking that things were just okay. It's like, oh, this happened, this tragic thing happened, and like nothing ever is going to happen again. It's like we just get comfortable. So to me, that 
that um that comfort like it you know um it cre- it creeps up on you and i think that's something that you know yeah um the there isn't as much power reading something on a news feed than somebody like talking and saying something yes part of the reason why i podcast you know Mm -hmm. uh i think people that listen to this you know that listen to this kind of stuff and listen to conversations are like they're the ones that are trying to fight you Mm. know the that thing yes searching for that content Uh, because i know i mean i um i I, right now i've been kind of taking a break from just like absorbing knowledge but like you know I'll, i'll i'll just uh be desperate to find like find some sort of knowledge that I feel like was deprived from me or, you know, not, not given to me. So, um, yeah, that's why I love these podcasts. And, um, you know, I've, I watch, um, different, different podcasts here and there, but like, I'm just grateful to be, be a part of this one and Hell have yeah. kind of my first spiel, spiel at this thing. Hell yeah, man. Uh, I wanted to have you on for a long time. The last time that we were going to do this, they were doing fucking construction. <laughs> we had, there were two different days we rescheduled. Yeah. I was so pissed. I was, like, I was so excited to have you on. And, you know, but, uh, you know, there's probably no one else that I would, you know, open the studio up with. Because, you know, I really, you really had, um, you know, you all really had a lot to say um, that day. But uh, what you said, some of what you said just really resonated with me. And I'm like, mm. this is a... You know, this is a smart individual. I got, I got to get him on. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And that's, um, that, that's uh, that's good to hear. Just being, uh, um, you know, I was in special ed, like up oh. until I, like, you know, graduated um, for reading. Cause really, just cause I didn't apply myself. But at the time, mm-hmm. I thought it was cause I had a problem. Um, so, uh, you know, to come out of high school and to first of all, like my junior year, I got a half a credit. Um, <laughs> you know, just cause I didn't, just cause I didn't apply myself. But mm-hmm. you, when when you have all these people that are making it seem like um, that that's the most important thing. It's like now you feel like there's something wrong with you that you can't do what everybody else is doing. Mm. Um, so, yeah, when, you know, anytime someone, you know, mentions uh, just my ability to articulate or anything, it's like, I, you know, I, I take I take pride in it and it and also humbles me just because, like, I I um, I did a lot to go from that wow. year. You know, I graduated a year late to go from that to somebody who actually knows know something or at least has has the ability to decipher through knowledge you know because i don't think we nobody really knows anything we just yeah. have the ability to kind of cipher through what's in our present i i can relate to that um you know i i think a lot of that too has to do with the education system i it really there you know there are people like you or me or other people who you know are smart who but they you know they just didn't do well in school mm-hmm. that just wasn't for them like you know, you can say what you want, but I really think that that's in part follow the system. Mm-hmm. Like, really, only thinking towards like one avenue of thinking. Not like I've seen a lot of things like just fail to really um, address the, that kind of stuff. Um, something that I don't know, I don't know how you feel about, but this, but something that always made me really upset when I was in high school was there would be Down syndrome kids in my grade, and what they seemed to do the entire day was just have them clean. Basically, just like free janitorial work, because I guess in their mind they probably assume, well, that's what they're going to be doing anyways. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm not an expert in Down syndrome; I don't know anything. But to me, you know, regardless of that, it just seems really unmoralistic to just. Mm. It's like it, <laughs> it's you know, it's almost like slavery in a way. Really, mm-hmm. like you're just like you're just all right. You're in our clutches for the whole day, and we're just gonna like you know, they're not gonna be able to fight like. <laughs> you know, yeah, they don't, they, they don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I mean, that's what the education system is. It's a, it's something that is designed to program for a mm. specific type of way. Um, one thing that really helped me um, when I was about 16, 17, I was at Walnut Creek, and uh, one of the teachers had this poster on the wall that said, um, by, it was a quote by Albert Einstein, it said, uh, imagination is more important than, um, mm. imagination is more important than knowledge. Or education. I'm trying to think of how he said it. <laughs> it's been a while since I mm. thought of this quote, but it, at the time, it just really, really helped me feel comfortable with uh, my imagination. Because I remember like being in like second grade and like being in class while the teachers talking and like looking up in the the corners and stuff and like thinking I was like a spy kid or something. And like I'm just in my own zone. And then yeah, it yeah. it grew from that to like writing my own raps in in class. Like I was I started writing. Well, actually, I started writing R and B uh, when I was like oh, when I was like eight years old, nine years mm. old. And um, 
I just I just wrote raps when the teacher was talking. I didn't really care. Like I don't I don't know why I'm even here. First of all, um, <laughs> second, like I, I'd much rather do what I'm doing. So, uh, but I also you know then like uh, struggling with peers. Like I, I I played with toys like for a while. Like I just loved um, I loved being in my own world and. Um, there was a lot of things that I kind of kept to myself, like being a uh, eighth grader and still playing with GI Joes. It was like nobody else was talking about that or doing that. So it was like, OK, well, I'll just keep that little piece of me hidden. Um, but like I said, it, to, to feel comfortable with that um, took a while. Understanding that all that was was creativity. I mean, I had the same GI Joes for like years. We had stories of each character. And like once that character died, it was gone. I got rid of that toy. Like, damn, you know, that's but nuts. that was that, that was just part of my my creative process. But I didn't understand that, you know. So, um, yeah. So shout out to something in me that rejected the education system. I don't, yeah. you know, uh, doesn't seem to necessarily work out for people anymore in in today's twenty uh, first century. Yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah, it's really the you know that's a whole other thing like trying to nav- like what we were talking about technology like trying to navigate that aspect you know with mm. education like with the, what's going on with you know COVID and Zoom like you know how how poorly education has gotten in the last mm. year because of that. I just I just think we started going too far away from like the the idea that I mean you just need to socialize as kids like I tell like yeah right now I real. have a, um, I have a six year old um, stepson and um, he's a uh, He's a, he goes to how elementary and um, I just tell him like right I, I don't I don't mind doing homeschool or him being there I just let him know like when you go there you're not going there to like get a good grade you're going there to socialize because I'm not a kid you can't play with me as a kid all the time like, I'm not always going to be interested in what you're interested in so you're going there to socialize and then like so there's no I want to r- make sure I remind him and, and then I, I just had uh, I had a son a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, as they get older, I just want to keep reminding them that it's not about that, that grade. It's just about like socializing and knowing how to communicate to another person, mm. communicate, yeah. you know, where you're at. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think so- socializing is such a problem for kids anyways. Mm-hmm. You like, you like, I think, you know, as parents in this day and age, people are really going to need to like push an extra step in their kid mm-hmm. to like making them socialize. Cause they're not going to want to, they're going to want to sit on that screen all day comfort and yep. i'm telling you once you get there it's like why would i do anything outside of this like there's <laughs> you're telling me i have to work when i don't have to work and i get the same like i get to still get netflix and chill <laughs> like you know that's how like people I, I just watch a lot like you know i watch a lot of um teenagers and, and people and my um my own family and, and, and structure in my own circle and it's like um if you if, if they weren't paying for that like you wouldn't have that, but they. But since it keeps getting paid for, they don't understand that. Like, like mm. you have to get it. Like, you're, you're you're not even paying for your pleasure, and I think mm. that's what's dangerous. So once you get comfortable mm. and you enjoy all these these luxuries, and you're not actually providing it. Like I've made a fire with my hands, and that feels amazing. Like that feeling is like you you, you appreciate mm. a lighter so much more. It's like yo, you're telling me <laughs> I can light this fire in a freaking flick of a. Like you have to make the whole kit the whole bow drill before you can start a fire and then you have to know the technique and it's not easy you know it's like but the the reward of that is is um is priceless yes yeah yeah i agree man uh (laughs) there's definitely a problem with uh people in this generation being like handed things and just kind of yeah oh i have this like (laughs) you know like why do you have it Mm -hmm. you like you should like do you want to like contemplate this and be like why do i have all this stuff Mm. you know uh yeah because then there's also like you're gonna have that human conditioning where they're just gonna you know want and assume this that they get this thing automatically Mm -hmm. um going back to like what you were saying about school and all that um this i i hope this isn't too personal question but i'm curious were you ever diagnosed with any anything like with involved like you know being special Um, or anything i mean I hope not. I don't. <laughs> There's been times where I thought I had some sort of mental issue, um, yeah. but no. I, uh, uh, I mean, music's been my my therapy, as uh, Emmett Phillips would say. He has a song called uh, "Music." Uh, music is my therapy, so um, I really resonate with that. But no, it's. Um, I mean, any any issues I got, I've always handled personally. You know, so um, I mean, I, I would definitely say everybody has their own mental yeah um, and oh, internal definitely, definitely. wars that they got to mm-hmm. go through 
um, and, and I can see where the confusion of like um, you're diagnosed with this certain thing can really just come from like yo, yo you're just you just have an internal war that you're you're not mm. facing so to call that a, a sickness or something it's like no it's just the human development mm -hmm. and that's why I, I, I feel like we had we used to have initiation processes you know um, especially as males you know because like you need to, as you can see, when a male's not put in check, like, it can <laughs> fuck up the whole world, you know, like, because um, they, you know, they start, th they start thinking they're, they're in control of everything. Mm. I see that. Uh, no, you know, and that's like, that whole thing is like a whole warp way of thinking, just n not being able to, you know, make that for yourself. Um, I'm curious about your project, Writing History. Um, mm. why, why don't you get into that? Yes, um, writing history. So um, back in, uh, let's see, shortly after the protests, what was that, like June, um, Toby Parks reached out to me with Station One Records and had asked me to put together a mixtape. And um, I mean, I was I was stoked just to uh, be able to take like, I mean, I was um, I wanted to find ways that I could, you know, help my community. And she reached out to me for that. And um, I felt what what better than to find creatives to kind of um, to help empower that voice of people mm -hmm. who are who are voiceless because that's why I do music um, to you know speak for the voiceless. But um, yeah, I, I started with this idea of the mixtape. I was trying to figure out what I was going to call it and like what was who was going to be on it. And um, I got the idea of writing history. And um, to me, um, at first it was going to be I, at first I had rewriting history. Because um, I felt like there's a lot of history, obviously, through <laughs> through the school system that um, is just phony and false. So um, that was the original name of writing history was rewriting history. But um, then it then it just came to um, came to the understanding of like I, I have a very you know unique process or at least a u unique opportunity as a human being. The fact that I've taught myself how to write music um, and that has helped me. Um, articulate and um, narrate what you see in front of you so like it's really helped me um, be clear with the universe what I'm trying to get from it and um, I just felt like that was um, useful for you know for for more people but that was the idea of the the name writing history was that you have the opportunity to um, write your own history and um, how you plan for your future is what you leave behind um so it was just it was the mixtape but all these thoughts was like this is just more than a mixtape like i can't just stop with like going get nine tracks and like end it there so mm. um we had the, the idea um i i wanted to get youth on on the mixtape so um i went to oak ridge and um the idea of the mixtape was to not only get creatives together but also donate um the the capital that was gained by it to some sort of organization mm. um so uh emmett phillips a good friend of mine i've mentioned him he works at oak ridge and i was i've worked with the kids there and i was like what better place um you know because these kids already have creative abilities you know working with him and um we we put together a song and like we had success as my protests um mm. actually yeah. Um, was just at Mainframe Studio yesterday selling some of their T-shirts. Um, they oh, made cool. they have a T-shirt design um, that they're selling um, to raise money for the Creative Arts Center. But they also um, are trying to get 10k on their music video. Success is my protest. Um, but um, all of that just was like this has to be more than just the mixtape. So like I was in the idea phase for like a long time. Like I had all these different ideas on how I wanted to do this, but um, it all boiled down to a program. I um, created uh, a program based off of what um, I saw the kids be able to do and the results that the kids got from um, doing that song, you know, to be able to, to speak, but also some of the things that they spoke about, you know, I mean, in, in that specific song, they talked about, you know things that they wanted to be like being an architect or being a business owner or um you know uh playing basketball and it was like they didn't necessarily doesn't mean they're gonna grow up to be rappers but they were they had the opportunity to speak about what they wanted from the world and um that's when i was like yo we're making a program that that duplicates this process um so i, I created the writing history program which um I just got accepted into Walnut Creek campus, my, my old high school to bring it to. Um, but, uh, 
yeah the 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 program um had like is, is basically designed to help um teenagers and young adults establish aim you know like what are you trying to aim at and um i created an acronym called dig a vision which is mm -hmm. dreams ideas goals values inspiration strengths impacts obstacles and needs mm -hmm. and um that is going to be the the structure of how they write their rap so they take that dig a vision they take um the process of kind of like that personal development and i have like little notebooks i actually have uh the one i carry with me all the time but oh, um we have these these little little notebooks here um that i i just find really handy to just pop out and like spiel that out you know when that pop, when that comes to you write it down um and that's kind of my process of writing is i write a bunch of little notes and then throughout the week i have this amazing song that I don't mm. use the notes necessarily, but the notes allowed me to flesh things out. Mm. And Get that um, brain space. Work. Yeah. So, and that's um, the process that I'm going to be doing with the kids. They're going to make um, their own song, and music video, and um, then I, we teach them how to be, you know, entrepreneurs and market their music video and raise money for what they want to at their school. So, say, you know, you're you, you enjoy the chess club. And you're like, yo. I'm, Man, I'll, I'll 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 freaking rap for some some money for the chess club. Like, I wanna I wanna have the best experience. I'm trying to go to Washington and and you know go against the best of the best. Well, r with writing history, if that's where everybody collectively chooses they want to raise money for, they can do that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's um you know uh, writing history. That's awesome. So yeah, like you said, giving a voice and you know, um, I you know I think kind of talking about the education system there's a lot of areas that's you know that has a lack of funding i can imagine that's one of them yes for sure um so i guess going back to um what how we met um that was for a music video so you, yeah. i saw you did that music video and you did another video it, it starts out with the teacher and the kids i think yep that's that's the su success of my protest okay yep okay all right um but really cool stuff um you got uh who is it who is the um the camera guy eli 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 fox go. yep with uh eli production yeah yeah um yeah you guys were um that was just a great experience to uh and, you know I, i'm actually a video production i don't okay. know if i mentioned that um no I, I i knew you did the podcast but I didn't yeah know. yeah okay so I'm, I'm at school for video production right now so um you know just add to that one of those experiences of uh mm. you know being able to learn all that stuff yes no and that's why I'm, I'm i'm glad you were there then i mean you said you didn't fit in well like normally the the person on the camera is behind the scene you know a little more low-key so to me you were playing your role you were Hell you yeah. were the the live human camera operating in there you know everything was like was uh recorded within you and now you know you, like you said you get added to your experience so project on yeah. podcast. yeah so you you fit in you fit in that day so yeah. thank you man thank you man so um I actually uh, actually performed last night, okay, for the first time in like four years, um, and I had I had a lot of you know really good um, responses. And this last year, you know, getting to know all these people in this community and the you know music and the hip hop community and you know other other venues has really been humbling. Mm. And uh, like, kind of just related to what you said, like um, you know collect you know collectively trying to come together. It's mm -hmm. really great. What um you said you performed last night? Yeah. Um, Where and what what do you perform? I wasn't aware of that. Um. So do you know Lolo Savage? Yes. Yep. So he had a uh, album release party. Okay. Um. It uh, me G seven, um, Gabe, uh, oh, shit, who else was there? Pac Man, Patrick, he was yep. there. Um. Oh, I saw pa I saw a clip of Pac. Yeah. Performing there. Yeah. So I actually missed him. I had to work after my performance, shitty enough. Mm. I clean offices, so I can kind of just do it anytime. So I figured I'd do that first and then hop out. So I was, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was, you know, just the, the welcoming nature of everybody in the community. Mm. Um, there's a lot of space here for, um, you know, a unique amount of space here for people to, uh, come together and let their thoughts flow and what they want to happen flow. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's um, so. When you came in, um, you came in for uh, revolutionaries televised. Mm, yeah. Um, and th yeah, that, that was where I had. Um, I think there was eight of us collectively on that track. Um, wow. And yeah, and that was it. Was so fun to do. I had um, let's see, T. Robs, 
um, Tyler Robinson. We had um, Rated G, um, Ruby Griffin. Uh, we had uh, Pac Man, Patrick Christian. I think it's yep. Uh, Christian, Christensen or Christian? Might be Christensen. Yeah. Pa- um, anyways, I don't even know why I'm giving first and last names. I just <laughs> felt cool that I knew these. You know, social. <laughs> I, I know these people personally. I feel I feel honored to know these people. So, um, uh, anyways, uh, then we had um, Ari Love um, on there. We had um, uh, that dude Biggs. We had um, Dynasty Dy. Yeah. She's um, actually coming on the podcast later. Nice. Yeah. Nice today. No, no, oh, no. just later. Yeah, I was about to say you <laughs> no, have a couple. Yeah, I was gonna say you're. No, fuck that. I couldn't do two. I, I've tried to do two in a day before. It's okay, like, <laughs> but yeah, then we had um, then we had Carlone um, Car- Carlone on there, um, Carleone, and uh, then then myself. And so yeah, there was um, there was there was eight of us, and it was just really cool to um, see the process. Like we all like I wrote a hook to it, and um, then I just sent that out to like to the universe and like i had different people hit me up that said they were interested i had some people in mind that i wanted on there and um man it was just cool to see like one person would write it go in the studio and they record it like i couldn't get them on one time i mean i tried to like to eliminate how many times i had to go to the studio but like mm-hmm. each studio session was there was only once where i had two mcs in at the same time um so I was there, um, like, I mean, it was like a three-week process of getting people um, in at different days, and it was just cool to see the different personalities, the one-on-ones, and seeing, like, how they um, they navigated the show and, like, their creative process on recording, um, but then it was also cool to see how the lyrics, like, it was like, man, I'm so happy that those lyrics were written to this, because, like, I couldn't imagine what you would have wrote, but now that I hear it, it's like, this is this is exactly what I heard, like, you come in, come in with, so um just a beautiful creative process one that like um i've never experienced um so it was like a first time like kind of being the the um the initiator and being that leader on a community project like that and um getting everybody in in the same space so that um that music shoot was just a phenomenal time and it's like i can uh definitely a highlight of 2020 hell yeah hell yeah um you guys definitely like i said you guys all had an energy and a, a, you know a family vibe you guys were able to you know give each other shit and bounce off each other and it's really cool man um so i think something interesting that you mentioned and i think this kind of goes you know into writing history at least like pick up on that um you kind of you talked about black lives matter and um you mentioned that you didn't necessarily um agree with that i don't know if that's true maybe i'm putting words in your mouth um but you just seem to have a a different perspective on that than the mainstream, you know, what's being pushed. Yeah. So, so I um, guess what's I'm curious what are your what are your thoughts on all that? Yeah, and and like to to make it clear cuz I feel like a lot of people get confused with like what they what the title of something is mm-hmm. and like thinking that that's what they're representing than like what they're actually rep like I agree. The I agree. the the feeling, you know, so like I would never take away from someone's passion and like what they're like representing but to me i'm a i'm an artist i i i'm a wordsmith so like when i'm using words like i take it really highly on on what words i'm using and um i've, I've just always had a um uh, i guess if you want to say stigma i, I don't want to use that word right now because i don't i don't have the definition in the back of my head like accurately but um it, I, I always had some a, a sort of feeling about the word black um once i started realizing more of like the definition of it and then um not not only the definition of like colorless because that confused me it was like okay they called us colored but then they called us black and it was like those are those are those are from definition those are um a little off but that's interesting that's that's where it started for me but then um i discovered this form because i started teaching myself law I, i discovered this form called um the sf 181 form and it's the uh, forum where you can change your ethnicity or race, what? which I didn't I didn't know was Holy shit. yeah I didn't I didn't know it was a thing. Like I mean if if, if Molly yeah, wants Molly, to pull look it that up, up, oh my gosh, um, actually that would be really helpful because but... I can then use the definitions of of these. Uh, this is what really struck for me. So when when you see this, it, it, it makes me hard. What was it again? SF one eighty one form. So yeah, when you see this, it just kind of like, it, it, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll let's go, get into the definition. Yep.
backing you up and have and being a fugitive fugitive um a fugitive am i saying that word right fugitive fugitive i knew there was more to the word i'm like fugitive is not it's not the end of that but um or no not even that a refugee that's the word that's why i was that's why i was not ending with the itiv um but um a refugee you know um that black is not backed by a nation it's the only one that's not backed by a nation and that means something yeah well i mean the thing i spot at, at the first is that it's such a broad range of <laughs> you know there's like entire like you know you know thirds or halves of the world that they're just clustering into one thing like yes it's ridiculous but yeah no that uh um you know i think this kind of goes into what else maybe you know the the you know kind of like the equity kind of ideas you know mm -hmm. like this the group identity i think it's i just you know i think people have so much more potential than what they identify as yes no and and what i want to um before we steer too far yeah, off yeah. i i, I, I want to mention that this is this is just how they speak legally this has nothing to do with any human soul yeah. or flesh you know and that's what a lot of people get mistaken is that a lot of this mm. corporate stuff is all on paper that's why you call me dean in the beginning <laughs> it's because everything's capitalized <laughs> yeah. You know, that's why I'm called Dean every time I show my ID. You know, it's because everything has to be capitalized on that. Anyways, th th this is what we're dealing with when you're in, when you're in a court and they're like, hey, you're black. That's what they're basing. That definition is what they're basing it off of. So that means something. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking around saying black lives matter and bla black and proud, you're saying that you're proud of not having anything backing you up as far as your ancestors. Mm -hmm. And and. That's interesting thought. Um, so yeah, to me, I mean, I changed mine. Mine's uh, I'm I'm an American Indian. Um, I even have a, um, a um, tribal ID, so I don't I don't oh, I don't use necessarily the same ID that you would use every time. I can I have the option to use different negotiable instruments, is what those are called. Um, so yeah, I mean, once you start learning a little more about law, you just learn that like yeah, you have your flesh and you have that going on, but there is another world that does exist that you have to be conscious of or you better have to have somebody that you really trust to be that representative for you mm. yeah you should uh you know you should be educated on who you are um i think it's really easy to you know latch onto a group like that mm -hmm. <sighs> damn i did not know this existed yeah oh, it, you know, and, and i didn't and like i said and i already had my feelings about the word black just by like knowing the um the origins of the word and like how long it's even been used to describe a, a certain group um yeah. i just I, yeah i just felt i felt i it just didn't resonate right with me you know i mean and, and i'm mixed so it's like i, I don't know if like mm -hmm. there's going to be any like casting judgment of like what i'm saying or somebody trying to say that I, you know i'm what is the word hypocrite or whatever yeah. it's just um but i i know from um majority of my life i've been called called black so like that to me um what does that mean as far as like what you know i, I look at it like um as a writer words are you know are um spells if you want to look at it like you know um you got harry potter and you know like any magician any magic trick has to have some sort of um word that goes with it hocus pocus has to be said you know or the the, the wave doesn't work so like mm to me those words are like spells so what are we casting on our people what are we casting on ourselves it's interesting um so you know i, I mean I, I don't necessarily agree with like having like political correctness and having to have all this like group right. identity but i do think it's important for you to figure out what word you're trying to call yourself mm. and, and and there's option there's tools already written like these are all symbols and like things that we have created from you know years and years so like that's there, it's already here so how are you choosing to use it mm. that's interesting no and you know kind of going back to you know you mentioned you're mixed like y you see all these other variations of all these you know different races on this form but yeah they just really they just really group everybody into the same i think i think you know that's racist even if you know you think you're on the good side or whatever like um it, um obs i think you know him yep, right yep. aubrey um I think at last podcast I had with him, we were talking about, you know, how <laughs> there would be like, uh, you know, Antifa, um, you know, extreme Black Lives Matter people who would like call other black people white supremacists because of that. 
Yeah, put him in a. <laughs> You're a white supremacist? Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, and, you know, um, like I said, I mean, because they're tools. They're yep. using these words as, mm-hmm. like, I mean, a tool can also be used as what? As a weapon. Exactly. Yep. So, like, that's, you know, um, to me, once once you get a human being emotional, they get ir- 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 irrational. I think yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah. like, you know, so that's, that's, um, that, uh, that's dangerous because then they have these tools or weapons that they're using and they don't, they don't, I mean, if you ever, you know, get into a, a disagreement, you know, or, um, you start getting kind of fired up and you just start, you know, things that start kind of getting, you, you start taking shots for no reason. I don't know about you, but like me and my wife, like we'll do it if we get too heated up, you know, it's like, um, just kind of taking, you know, just unnecessary shots. Like you, you leave and you're like, why did I say that? You know, it's like, it's not even what I necessarily meant, you know, cause we just have all these streams of, of thoughts mm. and feelings that just kind of pour in in us and they're, they're not what we identify with. It, I mean, it's kind of the whole group thing. It's like, these are just tools. And, um, if you get somebody who's emotional and aren't aware of the fact that those are tools, that's a dangerous mix. Cause then they're just, you know, shooting out into the universe you know these these curses yeah giving a kid a handgun you know <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah i i, I just, can i say you just yeah, reminded sure. me of this video i just watched recently of uh these um these guys in uh somewhere in africa i can't remember where it was but they handed the the chimpanzee uh, um uh ak-47 <laughs> And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And like that, like first the, uh, the, the, um, you know, it was picking it up, it was looking at it, and it was like holding it up with them. But then it just started shooting it, and like actually was pulling the trigger and was like shooting at their feet, and like they all like ran, like it was just, but it was just crazy. It was like, what do, you, what did you think was the outcome of that? Like, yeah, I mean, eventually they would learn how to use it and like you know figure out ridiculous. Like, hey, you're coming after me to like capture me? Fuck you. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> Probably like about time I got something to take y'all out. Like y'all, y'all been fucking up my earth for a while. We should uh, we should take cues from our ancient ancestors on that one, maybe. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, I it, kind of you know going back to that, uh, I I really worry about like you know where we're headed. Um, the amount of civil unrest we've had this last year. Um, you know, you know, I really hate because you know everything's so divisive now. I really hate using left and well. Sometimes I hate using left and right. Um, but you know that, it, like you know, you're picking a side, and like there, you know, on either side, there's violence. Mm-hmm. There's you know these things that, that have happened this last year. Um, it's it's really easy. I've been struggling with this myself. It's really easy to get down the dumps and depressed about everything, and just kind of, um, yeah, you know, zone in. It's overwhelming. Um, it's overwhelming because I mean that's what's like. It's what we spoke about in the beginning of that. Like it's at my fingertips. I can just wake up in the morning and look at something stressful as hell. Like, why would why would I choose to look at, um, like, I remember during the protest, like, um, you know, it's like I had to be mentally stable before I can just go look at the news or, like, what they were saying was going on. Because, like, it is, it is devastating to see, to see that violence. You know, I, you, like, nobody um, is necessarily sitting there wishing, like, to have to go through that. You know, even, like, so... Um, you know, uh, so I'd make sure like I was, I was good before I saw that. So I didn't let it, uh, make me, um, what do you want? I, make me reactive. Mm-hmm. Wanted to make sure I was proactive. And like, to me, that's what a lot of that was, was like designed to make us reactive and make you react. And, um, you don't ever want to be like, I, I, I train Wing Chun Kung Fu and like mm, they, it, they, they, they teach you to play the game, like to play the rhythm. And you, once you establish a rhythm, you change it because you don't, you, you, you want to be on top, like you want to be in control of that rhythm. And, you know, when you got, when you got somebody like throwing a hand in your face, they call like, they use elements to explain like some of the different techniques, but um, fire is like just a quick snap to the face. It's not designed to hurt you. It's designed to make you react. And once you react now, you're exposed because you mm. feel threatened. Natural human instinct. This is there's to me there's no left or right. I mean there, there there is in in a certain field, but on the real level of like life, there is no left or right. They're just we're we're literally just like if you look at like left and right, like we're human beings are in the middle the entire time. You don't ever go to another side. Like you know you're just you're you're um we're, yeah we're 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 to me it's all neutral. Um, we just all 
at different times play different parts. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we're all in this, you know, as divided as we are, we are all in a sense of collective. Because, you know, even the people that identify with either side, they, they have their own different, you know, differences and, and opinion and things, you know. I really wish people could just set aside some things and really hear people out. Mm. Yes. And I mean, so it goes back to writing history. Yeah. Like, um, one of the biggest things I, I realized making this, um, because being the creative, I've been on the side of um, talking more than being the interviewee or the interview the interviewer um so i um so like I, I just got so used to always telling my story and then like like we spoke on earlier like iowa like people here i i feel like they they use iowa as an excuse to be just like mm. boring mm, yeah it's like There's I, I can going on here. i can yeah. sit i can sit in one room for the entire day and you'll come to me and be like how was your day i'll be like yo like i was like i'll, I'll explain something in so detail you think that i freaking went to like went somewhere but i was just in this room like i didn't do anything I, but I, the way I, I i explain what i'm experiencing it's 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 adventurous uh but anyways um i i just feel like uh with with um what i started to understand through um writing history was an, it was an opportunity for me to listen to people so like i was asking people for their story and i realized people have made my given my my story purpose just because they listened like my story would have no purpose if i was just in my room by mm. myself yeah. so the fact that you have me on here and there's listeners it's giving me purpose by like w my story has a sense of purpose because someone's listening to it and then you got you know um uh and and to me that that's um that's powerful because you understand that like um anytime someone's trying to you know talk to you that like if you don't listen to them you're you're not giving what they're articulating in that moment purpose and um it's kind of you know a, a a big thing with writing history so it just kind of goes off of what you're saying yeah um well you know kind of going back to the internet thing i think that's that's a big part of the reason why people are so engulfed in that is they're trying to project you know everybody's trying to get the trend or like you know get on the trending page or whatever you know they're all I think what it is deep down is it's people wanting that voice and you know, not having that opportunity. Yes. And, and, um, once again, I mean, with writing history, you, you have these kids who have a chance to like, um, I don't use TikTok, but I created one for writing history because I understand that the kids use it. So yeah, like, yeah. but what I want is I want these kids to understand that the, the people who make these things don't have these things. Um, they use them as tools. Like they're used as certain, like, so how can we be the, um, the one that's being watched and the one that's producing and creating than the one that's just consuming. Mm. Um, so, you know, with writing history, you're giving these kids a chance to to make content that they can put on there and, like, they can be with somebody that's actually going to help them get, like, get some content that's going to be registered you know, and, like, be able to um, spread out because of the organization that us adults are supposed to provide our children, the structure that we provide them, you know. Um, so we're giving them an opportunity to create something with structure that can possibly set them, you know, set them up to where they have to where now they're the ones being consumed, you mm. know? Yeah. That's the balance to find, isn't it? Um, the consumer or the creator. And, and what I've, what I've been feeling lately is um, just as, because I, I, you know, we, we all get in the, I think we can all get overwhelmed and start over consuming because like we're looking mm. for safety. Yeah. But um, for me, I started realizing, like, what I consume, like, the only reason why I'm drinking this water is so that I can be on this podcast. You know, it's, I'm, I'm consuming what I need mm -hmm. to be, like, so if I if I have anything that I'm mixing in, like, whatever I'm eating or whatever I'm doing, I'm only consuming it so I can do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm consuming it to produce. That's, you know, to me, that's the only... So the only reason why, like, why we have all this stuff is so we can continue to live. So why, you know, like, so when you overdo that, um, you 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 get lost in doing that. So now you you no longer have purpose, you know, because you're just mm -hmm. consuming. But um, yeah, I, I I think uh, if we can understand that relationship between it, I think it would really help people. Um, it helped me understand that. Okay, I like to do this. I like to eat these um th these kind of snacks. Even though I shouldn't, but like at least when I eat it, I'm going to um, be 
as creative it's almost like being an alchemist it's like i'm, mm-hmm. I'm changing this into gold you know um I'm, I'm eating um this um you know one thing i like uh those those uh those cupcakes those uh mm. i'm trying to think it has a little swirl on the top i can't think oh of like hostess. the hostess stuff yeah what is that um, molly do you know i think it's just cupcake oh okay. and, yeah hostess anyways cupcake. um yeah <laughs> i love those um you know but like uh the, that I'm I'm consuming that it's like I'm I'm that turns into gold once it hits my body, mm. and if you can do that kind of alchemy, it's like, you know, right now we're in a we're in a we're in a space in human development where we've got like our our um forefathers or you know our 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 parents and our grandparents they uh they already had um they already got like in that cycle of this consuming in the way that we are in this relationship so i just think it's a lot harder to uh um dang i kind of lost my point i had a i had a really good point well um in, you know going back to you know being a consumer like like i, I appreciate the sentiment that you're saying uh like kind of being putting back in what you take mm-hmm. having having that conscious stream like in this in this world of like you know getting everything instantly through internet and netflix or whatever like you know you, you go on you log on the computer or your phone and you can just be on there for hours and there are so many people who you know they just are sitting on their couch all day literally not you know putting anything out besides like whatever they're thinking about in that moment on twitter or whatever mm-hmm. you know and that's not you know not really valued at anything for most people <laughs> yeah i don't know if you um you've seen the movie idiocracy i have not just watched it recently um it's great um it's by the guy uh mike judge that made beavis and butthead king of the hill <laughs> damn um great movie so basically um it's it's the idea that uh i'll, I'll quote joe rogan on this when he said um what he's, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm just going to paraphrase it. He said, basically, uh, dumb people are out fucking smart people and they're not wearing condoms. <laughs> so that's that's the um, that's basically what the movie's based off of. Um, okay. So I can use that as, a, as an example of what this. So this movie is like going 500 years in the future. And it's like, you, you really think we're going to be this like tech, you know, this advanced society. And it's like we're actually dumb as hell because we have no predators. <laughs> We have no reason to like strive so you just you just get maximum comfort you know and it's like um the movie is just a good it's 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 a good joke it's kind of scary because like the 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 president in it is um terry cruz <laughs> and he's like he's supposed to be like a wwe champ porn star like type guy and he's the president but it's just funny to see like the possi- like the fact that last year there was the possibility of kanye being president it's like that's leading like you're you're literally saying that you're willing to to choose um somebody who um is a spokes like uh, is a is a somebody who is a like a a, a creative what am i trying to like an actor basically like when we're, bef- we're when we're performing we're not necessarily like i feel like i mean that's kind of why i make the music i make i don't i i'm really raw with what i what i speak of so i don't necessarily want to say i'm necessarily acting but we're, we're performing and you want somebody who's always performing like i'd you know um they're not necessarily going to be speaking truth the whole time ex- exactly they're going to play the the media that's what they are they mm-hmm. like that's that's a, a um a, a media guru or whatever you want to call it someone who just really knows the science of media and um I don't know. I guess it can be used for good, but like that can be dang, you know, yeah. you can be led in the wrong way and you just, you feel like you're re- like, yeah, I, I believe in this. And it's like, ah, it's just yeah. really good science that was played on you. Really good juju, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump ruined it, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that like the whole, like the celeb, you know, how like Oprah was thinking of running for president and like all that, like it's definitely ruined like the prestige of like the presidency. It's now, yeah, it's, it's all about the, and i mean well i just also i like you think of just the dumbing down of things um i think it's been happening i think there's been uh you know it's just been an evolution and like um i think um when donald trump hit the scene it was more like a wow we've it was like i didn't realize you got you got so big now you're you know you grew up you know when you see someone you like like it's like I just think because um, you're around somebody so often that you don't you, you know you don't see their their growth, but then all of a sudden you're mm-hmm. like, dang, like you're actually 
five years, you know, five years old. Now I'm speaking because I got kids, but like, <laughs> um, I just think that's kind of how it snuck up on people too. Is this this now we're in a stage where what has been growing for who knows how long is at a state where it's like it's actually in your face now. Yes. Hello, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, being more aware is definitely <clears throat> something I hope people pick up on a little more in the future. Takes work. <laughs> <laughs> it takes work. It takes more work than people are. Yeah. And I well and what I would say is that I mean being aware is one thing, but like how you respond to what you're aware of. I mean I, I guess that's responsibility. You know, it's like you have um you're aware of things but you don't have the ability to respond to it. And mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of people get trapped. Because they start feeling um worthless. And that's the whole like think think global but act local. It's like if you just focus on six people and like that's those are the people that you check up on no matter what like you are responsible for those people mm. and hopefully you're in somebody six too because you need somebody you know but like if we just did like then like i don't know i just feel like um uh the, it, it wouldn't be as overwhelming as far as like all the people you need like that are out here like I, I don't know about you, but, like, when I drive past homeless people, like, I've, I've refused at this point in my life to give them any money. Mm. I just, I don't have, like, I don't, I, I, for one, could definitely use some money because I'm actually, like, raising money for writing history so I can provide this program for free to kids yeah. so we can we can prevent and be proactive and not have kids on the streets. But to have that that passion and that emotion for the, the, the youth and for the community and then like do something about it but then still be asked for for more it's like to me that's um you know like um you have to you have to be strong to be able to not just can always give when you especially when you don't have it like mm. you know um so anytime i see somebody on the streets it's like i'm in, in a way i'm doing you a favor by denying you you know um i remember i was and i'm to clear that up so it doesn't sound heartless <laughs> i was in the woods uh one time um i was going through some things and i go to the woods to find like um just that clarity and space from high vibration living and like be somewhere where i can actually heal and think um but i was like out what there kind of, like what woods like in a park or um i mean i like i i I've been different private lands, different okay. different places. Like, yeah, just deep, whether it's a park. I, this in particular time, I was in North Carolina at a park. Oh. Um, but I was there, which was nice. I was there when people weren't digging the cold necessarily, so they were kind of staying away. So I kind of <laughs> had the, the space to myself. But mm. um, when I when I went up, I walked, uh, I walked like three miles away from my campsite up to the, like the main area where like visitors come and like people come in and uh, explore. But um there was a squirrel that had came up it was just like sitting like as close as you are to me it was just looking at me and uh, i'm sitting there like yeah what's up man like you know and it's just sitting there and i'm watching all these other squirrels like looking for food and this one and i realized this one's sitting by me because it's used to um tourists and people just giving it something and now it's coming to me as if i have that it's like and I sat there, and, and I didn't start realizing this until about 10 minutes in. Like, And I'm, so we're still looking at each other. It's like, yo, you just wasted 10 minutes of grinding <laughs> to get your own food when all your other peers are out here like, why aren't you doing what they're doing? You're waiting on me to give you something. I really don't even have anything, even if I, like, even if I did. I wouldn't like give it uh, because like I'm taking something away from you. And that's what one of my, my, uh, my survival um, teacher that uh, – one of these five of the teachers that I learned from, uh, Tom Brown Jr., he spoke a lot about. He's like, um, don't feed, um, don't feed the animal, because then it's going to depend on you, mm. and then it loses its ability to get it on its own. That's a good sentiment. Uh, I was just, you know, I was kind of on that train of thought myself with this. Um, like, I think one of the problems with like some of the things that are, you know in the, in our culture is like kind of a lack of responsibility like kind of just doing things without consequences it mm -hmm. seems to be uh you know a lot of people seem to have that kind of mindset and like i think it is really important for the human psyche and being able to function in society you know properly to like have a sense of responsibility have a sense of community mm. so i really i really appreciate everything you're saying i think a lot of people um can heed that advice and mm. you know if they truly want to do, do, are you familiar with Jordan Peterson at all? 
love Jordan. I, I just read Hell his yeah. book, um, yeah. Twelve Rules of Life. Damn, big, I, I got, I got, I got. It's a big into book. It, it's a big book, but um, one of my actually favorite books. I, I mean, I feel like I relate to his personality a lot, just as mm. far as like you know. So he's been. Um, I I actually listened to like all of his personality lectures when I was like studying psychology. Um, so awesome. Um, yeah, he was a big influence this past past year on just you know some it's really helped me with just personal things that i'm going on in my in my own mind that's it's awesome. like that's awesome now i'm aware of w without psychology not, you know not even speaking on jordan b peterson but like just psychology i just feel like everyone should know basic psychology you should know how to navigate this like depth of the complexity of human like intelligence like it's it's it can work against you if you don't know how to use it if it's not mature like it's, it's but yeah, I, I don't know if you were gonna. No, no. Um, but like, kind of what he talks about. You know, I always give Molly shit. Like, uh, clean your bloody room and all that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like he definitely, he definitely promotes like that sense of responsibility. Like, yes. I think, I think he's a, he's a very, very smart man. And it's, it's interesting you say that because growing up when, uh, when I was a teenager, I always felt like uh, my room was a reflection of my mental space. Mm. Um, mm. I started because it was just like it was tore up, and I'm like my mental space definitely reflects that like this is a mess like nothing's organized i have not my closet i used to just throw my clothes in my closet so i had to like sort through a pile of clothes anytime i wanted to wear something like it was just a half like i created all this extra work just to find like a basic thing that should be hung up you know if i would have did that ahead of time but i realized that and then um getting older i just um and I can use this as an example. I, I walked here um, today. Mm. Um, just a 30-minute walk. It's, it was beautiful outside. But uh, we're on the south side of Des Moines. And um, it's, just, it's just dirty. Like, every yard just has trash in it. And it's like, yeah, it's um, you know, uh, I, I, I just don't get, you know, first of all, I understand that, that, that this is our home on a large scale. And that that same thing applies, that this is a reflection of our mental process mm. um you know uh and when you eat trash you become trash and like then it becomes everywhere else and in that movie idiocracy actually they have in the future 500 years from now uh human beings got so lazy to deal with their trash that there became mountains of trash <laughs> like like they, they they were they were looked at as a um just as we look at it, mountains now like a natural <laughs> thing like yeah ridiculous take pictures in purpose yeah like it's <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah man uh that's why i i truly believe in independence and like um obviously we're, we're depending on on certain things to live but independence in the sense as, as a team member i'm i'm a team member and it is important if you want to be able to if i'm going to trust you and you're going to trust me i need to know that you can do this on your own mm -hmm. that i can that i can turn yes. my back and know that everything behind me is okay and that takes independence. If you mm -hmm. can't do, um, if you can't simply take care of yourself and your own responsibility, which really is just your your circle. Like you're not really responsible for a whole. Like the earth can handle this. You don't have to do anything extra than handle what is needed for you. Like as a being. So um, yeah, to to me that like if you can't do that, then how do I? How can I trust you to be a valuable team member? Because, yeah. like, for example, I'm working with kids. Like, we're we're working with life now. We're not just we're not just playing with GI Joes like I used to back when I was a kid. Like, we're dealing with real life, and that takes um, takes care. Like, you have to like really know how to like. Um, for example, I got like a bunch of plants. I think uh, last year during the pandemic, so I was like, oh, if we're gonna be in the house, like we're gonna at least have some good air up in here, you know? Because <laughs> uh, so I went and got a bunch of plants, but. I've never taken care of, like, I did the survival stuff, but I didn't have to take care of a plant. Um, so, like, I, I lost a lot of plants, and then I was like, ooh, I need a fish tank. So I went and bought this big old fish tank and got, like, all kinds of, I, not all kinds, I had four fish. Um, <laughs> but, like, they all they all died, you know, like. <laughs> Sounds I just, like the story of our life. <laughs> you know, um, but, like, I'm like, dang, look at me. Like, this is, what, to me, it was an example of what we're going through. Like, I have I have a child. Now, I'm not going to let that, my child die, but if, if I can't take care of a plant, if I can't teach myself how to take care of a plant, then I'm really going to struggle on the, the part of my son that is a plant because mm. they're all seeds and they all yep. grow. Um, and there's that little piece in him that is a, like the plant is a symbol of something in him because we all evolved from nature. 
And if you look at everything as evolution, it's like that's why I feel like the Native Americans learned from different animals because they're all within you. We're like, I think why human beings feel like they're on the top is because we kind of uh, physically we did evolve from like the the smallest micro to where we are now, and um, that means everything on the way up is still in you. And if you don't connect to those symbols and understand what they even symbolize, it's um, you know um, they're tools. Yeah, exactly. You know, to to understanding like I mentioned the bees. Like now we know there's a part of a. I mean, Jordan B. Peterson mentions the lobsters. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. all these different things that are part of us that operate without your control if you think you're in control of all that you're a fool mm, mm. yeah that's uh that's definitely something i've been learning the last couple of years too um i went through a divorce a couple of years ago mm. and that taught me a lot about that kind of stuff like there you know there's only so much you can control yeah, yeah. um you know this kind of goes into covid too um a lot of people are trying to control everybody mm -hmm. with all this and I think the people, the, and they're always the most stressed out. They're always the most anxious about, it, you know. Mm. I think it, all you can do is control yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing you can do. You can wear a mask. You can social distance. But, like, beyond that, that's really all you can do. You mm. can't, you know, force people to do what you want them to do. It's always going to fail every time. No, agreed. And I think once you start being the person who's like, no, I want somebody to tell me what to do. Like, no, we're going to, we, like. <laughs> So you, so you, you want the government to tell you to wear a mat. Like I just think once you have the like once you give that up, you're giving that up. Have you heard about vaccine passports? I have. Um, yes, and that's it's ridiculous. Yeah, um, it scares the shit out of me personally. I mean, I, there. So that's why it's just important to study law. You know, um, what's the word? I, I was just uh, just working with it because um, I'm, I'm teaching because I know I'm going to come into a, a, a like a um, encounter I'm going to have to use this word it's a, uh, I recorded myself say it on my phone um, <laughs> trying to, uh, 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 ela um, elastical matter elastical matter es, es elastical matter it's es elastical matter anyways it, it, it acuelastical I can't find it. I know it's ECC <laughs> is all I can see in my head, and I can't spell the rest, so I'm having trouble say it. But it, it basically, when it, when you're dealing with courts, it's dealing with um, like religion and like spiritual. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So ecclesiastical. ecclesiastical. Yes. Ah, ah. I okay. had to look. I had to go on Google and I had her say it, and then like after she said it, I um when I like recorded myself say it over and over. Um, but it's I it's a new word I just just learned uh, two days ago. So, Damn. but um. Like I said, I just feel like I'm gonna have to use that because you're not gonna get me that. Like, no, this is that's against my religion. <laughs> like, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Like, li that? Like, literally. So I, I mean, and that's that's why it's important to understand these different like lawful things because you, um, th there's a way. Like, like I said, once you give up your power, you're like someone else is gonna be in control of those things, and that means they have their own agenda to push on. Like, not mm -hmm. even necessarily agenda; it's their belief. They may believe different things in you. They may have a different belief of what they view you as. They may not view you as I view you. You know, I view people as angels. I, I view people as somebody that's going to offer me something. Um, and, like, that that's different than if I'm viewing you as an a, object. Something yeah. that, like, like you or said, an control. Entity. Yeah. Or, like, government, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, when it comes to those those vaccine passports, I just, I just what I advise everybody is just be legally equipped because that is the only way you'll be able to operate with that kind of like because they're, they're it, it is not as like they can't enforce certain things on you as a human being now they can when it when it deals with their commercial things and the things that they use but mm -hmm. that's because you're giving them full control over every single thing that's owned you know i mean if we got into like the you know the federal reserve and like different things of that nature like we can go into like what's owned by who and like how i mean the people who are owning these things like yeah like that's why i'm trying to be more private and have my own things that i've built i'm building my own co connection with someone who has a podcast oh, that you know like now like oh well, i'm talking about yeah, you yeah, you know sorry. so <laughs> but you know I'm, I'm i have this connection to where i don't have to go on a podcast that um i don't necessarily know like i don't trust i don't know you know it's not it's not somebody that um that is just another human being you know i don't like if you know what i'm saying like yeah uh, yeah but um I'm, I'm, i, I want to build these things so i can go to a podcast and have a relationship with a uh with someone where it establishes a friendship 
to where I can now go to that because now it's anytime I need to do a podcast, I don't got to go anywhere else. You know, if I can help you grow as a podcast, that means if you had a million m- million um, followers, um, and I and you know, it's like now I like that's you're the only person I need to go to for that. Mm. Um, you know, when it comes to like flying planes and stuff, like I'm trying to have. I want to get my my plane license so I can damn like really that's something that's that I, like it's it's a goal. I mean, there's so many things that pop. It's like I want to learn that. I want to learn that. But um, <laughs> if I could get that a pilot license, um, that'd be um, awesome. Or at least have a friend. So out there, if there's anybody watching that wants to be friends with me, that can fly a private plane. Like, let's do that. So we don't got like we can still travel this 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 earth that is ours and like not have to worry about um, what the public's doing. Like I just to me. Um, there's only so much you can do when it comes to public matters. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with like the different courts. I think there's a uh, remember the the terms. There's like the, there's different courts though. There's like a commercial court, and then there's um, human human court. Human like, rights. Uh, human rights court. Or no, civil. No. Civil and criminal. Is that yes, or or commercial and criminal. I think is what what they would classify it as. I had the the actual like how they worded it in their thing. That's why I was hoping I could find it fast. But um, anyways, um, uh, basically, like there's just certain things on in public that just can't be mentioned. Mm. There's a certain thing like it, it has nothing to do with that fact that it doesn't exist. It's that when it, when we're dealing with public matters, like if you go into a courtroom and that courtroom is full, they don't respect you. But if you go into that courtroom and it's empty, it means that we're talking about something that the the public just can't know, you know, and that mm. and that's different. So when you understand, like to me, um, I I start applying that that um, you know, shout out to Yusuf L. I was uh, watching some of his uh, work on YouTube, and he had mentioned that. Um, so I was quoting him, but um, to me, I apply that to other things in my life. I'm like, okay, um, there's a reason why I vibrate differently than everybody else, and I, I'd rather protect that that vibration so that means i'm just my personality is just more private in that sense and i think um when you're private or at least secured it's i mean it's the same thing being a secured party um you're protecting um your flesh and like the things that you own you know so that's yeah. a, that's an important thing to remember yeah and i, I just kind of once you mentioned the passport thing <laughs> i'm like oh man like they're yeah it's they're, rough man it it it's really easy to have a negative outlook on the future when that kind of thing happens. Um, I I will say there. I think Florida and Missouri have both taken pretty hard n- stances on that against that. And I think I have a feeling I would fall suit in that. So that's I, hopeful. For I us, would at least. say I. I'm just going to make a prediction from what I've learned. I don't. I don't. I don't want to make it seem like I know everything. But yeah. from what I've seen. <laughs> I guarantee you that the the places that will accept that will be democratic, and the places that aren't are going to be republic. Yep, it's because if if you look at the um, the protests and the things that happened over last, like I've that's when I taught myself government and like politics and stuff. Like mm. I was kind of learning law before that happened, um, but then I started learning like politics and stuff, and I, then I learned that um, demo- democratic has nothing to do with our like country and like what is yeah. it's, it's a republic. Yeah. It's, it's not in our like constitution. And then I started asking myself, well, what does that mean? Um, cause some people look at republic as like a, um, a bad thing, um, or, or capitalist as a bad thing. Yeah. Um, but to me, when we're dealing with what's on paper, when we're dealing with a system, I think it's very beneficial for it to be capital. But when we're dealing with people, then yes, it should be. Um, uh, what was the other one? A uh, communist. Yeah. It should be more, you know more uh, com- uh, community based. Um, but to to try to take a system and make that system what a human being should be, it's like it's like making artificial intelligence mm, in a way. Yeah. You know? um, the two things aren't analogous. Like you, yeah, you can't you can't the you know the whole point of like that capitalistic thing is it's like it's basically letting the chips fall as they may. You know, it when you the beauty of it is leaving that system open because when you try to define that social aspect in the system, then that causes civil unrest. Mm. Mm. Yes. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, 
shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> just going to think about i mean i i think a lot about um like i said just the wording of everything and like what we're calling stuff um so when it comes to that like i just i just feel like a lot of people just aren't aren't aware of of um you know what's being like i i, I freaking got a um, black's law dictionary just so i make mm. sure when i'm dealing with police officers or anybody when it comes to political matters and uh lawful matters that i'm using the correct terminologies mm. it's like one thing to say um it's one thing to say we're sitting here doing drugs and then we're doing like smoking cannabis like this yeah. different on on legal legal um paper you know because mm. cannabis is um looks different than a controlled substance that's why like you'll see on certain like um if you've ever been charged like i've been charged for certain things and i'll see the way they word it and like mm. um to me that's not how i would say it but that's how they're 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 classifying it and once they do that because you can go to high v and get drugs you know so like why is that like well how come that's been associated with see i i just even had a thought maybe maybe it's just to make you feel comfortable with what the streets are giving you mm. it's like oh we have this here and this is professional and like these are supposed to be your medic your medicine <laughs> and these are your drugs but that's just something to make people comfortable with saying drugs on the street so they take that medicine think it's you know like a s psychological thing of taking that medicine and thinking it's you know helpful yeah um, have you ever ham uh, heard of Hamilton Morris? No. Um, he is a chemist, and he uh, he has a show called um, Hamilton's Pharmacopoeia, and he explores a lot of drugs, a lot of psychedelics mainly. Mm. Um, and he has a view on you know drugs where like he views like Advil the same as heroin. Like he views every drug in the same scope, and I think that's I personally agree with that. I think it's a um, you know, <sighs> shit. You want to look that up? Who the um, professor was that um, recently said that he was a regular heroin user? <sighs> he's been on. He's been on Fox and stuff. Mm. Press, yeah, regular heroin. Yeah. medical meth mm -hmm. you know and you know not to mention <laughs> the one the only drugs that are legal are alcohol which is like one of the worst things that you put in your body um yeah i think it's a um i think all that's just you know it, it blows my mind just to see um the confusion of certain things it's like what's the core of it and like you know you mentioned it like it uh, um, it's viewed as bad or you know but to me um I try to go to the basic of is it natural or artificial mm, mm. so like i think i just read a book um called the the uh uh dna of knowledge i believe um anyways it was about um the relationship between shamanism and like modern uh um biology and uh just like how you have the serpent um, oh the cosmic serpent is what it was called that's mm. that's the name of the book um but it was talking about how um the shamans wouldn't sell like their they wouldn't give off to the the westerners their way of making ayahuasca so what what happened was a scientist created lsd to mimic ayahuasca mm. but it's artificial interesting. interesting um and what i and i and i say that because if you start thinking about everything we're experiencing our foods becoming artificial mm. everything that we talked about when it came to legal status it's all artificial um you know that's uh um only exists on paper you have you know the drugs are artificial so to me that's when i'm like okay i'm not necessarily going to call things good or bad but if i like if if i'm going to put that category somewhere that the artificial would be the bad just because of not it being something evil but because of how lasting it is it's not it, it is not reliable artificial you have to constantly consume it that's why people take more lsd than they do ayahuasca you take ayahuasca and like 
most people's lives change after that. Yeah, like, there's yeah. that one guy. You're um, not jump back into taking. You're <laughs> not doing that again. You know, um, and, and only shamans do that. But like, you yeah. have that guy that had that TED talk um, that talked about. Um, I think it was the war on drugs. But he talked about his ayahuasca experience, and um, he was saying just how like it made him stop smoking marijuana because hmm. like it, it it showed him that it like showed him his future and like how it was affecting him and like after that he seemed he was fulfilled but you know it's like to me we have these things that you can either get small doses and you have to get a lot a lot like a lot of it or you can just get one full good meal and Mm. be good for like four hours you know mcdonald's don't last for four (laughs) hours it's burnt up in an hour you know like um you know so but that's how i look at like um all this talk on like this on what people are making bad and what they're making good it's like it's more of like well the the artificial is always going to be more harmful mm. yeah um that's you know that's a good way of thinking of it and, you know the war on drugs i think has created more official drugs it's like it's like you know back before the war on drugs things were pretty natural i mean i guess there was lsd but you know it was all pretty organic, natural mm-hmm. grown substances. The processes were, you know, not really that crazy. But now, you know, 40, 50 years later, they have all these crazy chemicals. You know, people are just, you know, instead of using those, they're finding new ways to get high. <laughs> and it's usually in a way worse manner. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's like uh, you know, the vaping with cigarettes. Like, I have a, I have a feeling that's way worse. Way worse than... Um, that was it? Um, I think there's like metal... Like, every time you take it, there's, like, a tiny amount of metal that goes into your lungs. Mm. So that could be, you know, people could have, like, metal buildup in their lungs, and nobody knows what the long-term effect of that is. Probably not good. Exactly. Um, yeah, anytime that you're, anytime you're replacing something with so- something more artificial, like, you're um, you're not going in the right direction, you know. Yeah. Um, that's why, like, even, you know, our medicines and stuff, it's like. Um, I got into the, the Native American philosophy of living with the earth and like the survival training because I, the stories I was reading is like, yo, these people are living like way like when they when they were able to thrive and like actually do their practice and like pe- people did that they um, they just lived in more harmony. They didn't have as much sickness, you know. Um, and like you know, you, I mean, you got Doctor Sebi who's a really good example of like um, what our natural medicines do. And, you know, that's because you, you you can look at artificial as processed. Anything that's processed, anything that has to go through a process, you're taking the whole the wholeness away from it. And when you take the wholeness away from it, that means you're only giving yourself a percentage of what's been provided to you. I'd rather have the whole thing, you know. Um, so give me that bittersweet um, plant that doesn't taste that good um, that 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 people have take and like made a pill out of and mixed it with other stuff and it's like mm-hmm. basically you're just you're um putting bacon out sal- you know <laughs> bacon powder in your freaking coke <laughs> you know <laughs> like, bacon on your salad <laughs> <laughs> damn that's a that's an interesting way of looking at things i appreciate your uh your stream of consciousness it's yeah. tight um y- you. you mentioned having kids i'm curious about you know i kind of like that i me not having kids i always like to ask people who have kids and you know have a family what that's like oh and you know what i guess kind of an aside like what's that been like during the pandemic has that been any worse better um i mean for me so uh i'm I, i've been a stepfather for the past three years okay. um and that that that's a specific type of relationship you know mm-hmm. and um it one thing that i struggled with was the fact that i had this person that was in my life that i didn't get to see from birth you know, um, and, uh, you know, so that was like something that is like, I, I wanted that with, you know, with him. Cause I, mm. I love him. Like he was my son, but you know, so that was, that was one thing, but then to have, um, I think that's also a different relationship. Cause once they hit five, you know, they're kind of, they're, they're kind of going to the world now to, to talk to their peers. That's when, you know, if, um, Jordan B. Peterson talks about it, but in like psychology, it's like after five, like now they're, they're socializing. So everything you've given mm-hmm. your child up until then is what they're going to use as tools to go out and navigate in the, in, um, you know, the world with other people. Um, so, uh, having, you know, my son last year, um, it was in December last, uh, 2019, um december of 2019 and and, uh so the pandemic hit shortly after and to me 
I honestly couldn't ask for a better time because now I, I got my son. I got to sit mm. and um, I got to have that experience because I, I find these first few years is so crucial, you know, and like their development and like, um, you know, uh, so during the pandemic, pandemic, I mean, obviously you have your worries like when he had um, t uh, teething fever, fever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was one time uh, his, his temperature got up to like 103. But like you have these thoughts of like, oh, is it is it what everybody's saying is going around or is it just a normal thing? Um, now, I handled that um, naturally. We, you know, I, I had like um, we used catnip. Um, I use oregano um, oils for his toes. Like I, I did different process. We put them in the tub mm. and um, I think it was lukewarm water where it kind of helps cool them down. Um, but, uh, you know, that it was i mean it was stressful it's like you know yeah. what is what is it and it's only straight like not only is it stressful because you you're, you're the parent and you care a lot but like you care a lot and then you also know that there's all this other talk about everything like you know two years ago if i had a child and i had like he got sick like i'd be a, a concerned parent but i wouldn't have the extra worry of having to worry about like oh is this covid thing like is this is um is this affecting him you know uh and you know because i have my own views on on that but like um yeah that that was that was uh my experience through there but like i said i just enjoyed being able to to enjoy my son privately to be able to have more time on my hands um i felt like last year was just a good time for me to um to basically just take a break from giving my energy so much mm. um and also help me see where to put my energy because when you're just when everything's open like I, i'm once you throw me in there like i i just i just give so i'm learning not to just throw myself in certain situations because i will give it's it's my personality it's natural for me it's hard not to give um so uh the pandemic gave me a chance to not have to give so much and like actually give to myself and like i said then learn how to properly give to others and like manage it that's awesome man i'm, I'm glad you were able to take you know, take a good path and have good energy through the pandemic and COVID because um, a lot of people had, you know, it was the opposite. <laughs> yes, no, and um, you know, and and uh, like I said, you can put me in a room and I'll make it sound really, really wonderful um, because it is. It is wonderful to be alive, um, but it doesn't mean that you don't have those. You know, um, like I think I experienced some of the vibrations of what other people like the the overwhelming and the worry and the fear. I definitely was a victim of the fear, you know, like it comes yeah. and goes. But, it affected everyone. Um, you know, um, but yeah, man, overall, I think um, I just see everything as natural, you know. Once I started learning um, wilderness survival and like learning from nature, I just realized how everything was just natural. You know, it's natural for um, certain things to transpire when this is already in effect. Hmm. D uh dion it's been a good conversation man yeah i think it's time to wrap up um do yeah. you have do you have anything else you want to mention before we wrap up here um, music uh music links or social links or anything like that um man follow um writing history today youtube um we have the success is my protest right now and then we're trying to get that to 10k views Hell yeah. uh, right Hell now yeah. it's at 4.2 Wow. um so that's the success of my protest that's the the um music video that was created by the kids um i have my own personal things coming up but you know so stay tuned for that i have my um you can follow uh my page dk imamu Akachi on facebook um i have dk flame feather at dk flame feather on instagram um i'll just say follow those just to stay tuned on what i'm going to be launching and, and talking about later um, I'm trying to learn how not to speak too much on certain things because then I have the overwhelming of like, oh, now I have to live up to that date I said. And it's like, I did not know. But there is things in the future. I have a um, you know a personal album, my own, uh, my first solo album that I'm working on. Hell yeah. And, um, I'm that. and I have a, a collaboration with Andre Davis that is freaking mm. fire. Um, so there's some clips right now, uh, but we only give little snippets of what we're working on. <laughs> um but yeah man uh the main thing is writing history today um follow that because that's going to have a lot of great great music by by kids um in the community you know to share so hell yeah hey man it's been a pleasure yes thanks for coming likewise. all right everybody have a good night yes stay tuned next week we're gonna have sad boy samurai in the podcast he is a mm -hmm. local edm artist uh we've i get he was um 
Jordy Flash, I guess, last time he was on. But um, really good guy we've had him on before. It would be great to have him back. So Yes. All right. Hey, man, it's yeah. been great having you.